Welcome to this info session about the two visual arts qualifications we deliver here at TAS TAFE, Certificate 3 and Certificate 4 in Visual Arts. My name is Melissa Holcomb and I'm one of your teachers in the course and a point of contact for students as the course coordinator. Firstly, I'm going to give you an overview of the visual arts experience with TAS TAFE and then talk about the differences between the Certificate 3 and the Certificate 4 to help you make the decision on which course is best for you. If you are still in doubt or there is something you need to know and we haven't covered it in the session or you would like some further clarification about something, we will open it up for questions at the end. So let's get started. Practical studio classes are delivered on three of our TAS TAFE campuses around the state. One in the south at Hunter Street in Hobart, one in the north at Inveresk Launceston, and one in the northwest in Devonport at Valley Road. There is also an online component of the course supported by weekly video conference sessions, so students do need to have a device to access our online learning platform, Canvas. Our regional libraries do have computers for student use, but these will need to be booked in advance. Both courses timetable two days on campus plus half a day contact online. Our teaching staff have vast experience in teaching a broad range of visual art and craft skills and knowledge. Each have an active practice expressing their own passions and specialisations, and they are always eager to share what they know with their students. The course is tightly structured to maximise the timetable days of contact and online learning. However, it is important to note these are classified as full-time courses. And to successfully complete, you will need to continue to work on the course content and assessments in your own time. We estimate an extra six to eight hours a week for the Certificate 3 course and an extra eight to 10 for the Certificate 4 course. Qualifications are divided up into units of competency. These units describe the skills and knowledge you need to learn to complete specific processes related to being an artist or craftsperson. You will learn these through skill demonstrations and practicing by completing small samples or artworks. You will learn how to think, research, explore and experiment like an artist. This is known as the creative design process, and it is what artists with a capital A use to make their art. And this process is illustrated here. Single units or similar units grouped together create a module of learning. Modules will be studied on campus only, online only, or a combination of both. Each module runs for approximately four to six weeks following on sequentially from each other and culminating in a final self-directed project in term four. The course follows the timeline of the school year with students taking breaks in the official school holidays. Foundation processes in the certificate three covers foundation drawing to communicate skills, introduction to using and understanding color, identifying and applying the elements and principles of design for both 2D and 3D artworks, and an introduction to exploring and referencing art history when making artwork. Essentially, you are learning to apply the creative design process and how to document it. Foundation processes in the Certificate 4 looks to extend your skills in drawing to communicate, interrogating art history and theory in reference to your making and conceptual development, developing writing about art skills and considering your future art pathway. In summary, you will be refining your own creative design process and alternative ways to document it. There is a significant increase in the number of research tasks at this level and requirements to share and discuss your work with others. At the end of each module of learning in both courses, you will be given a creative project to complete for assessment, applying and documenting the entire creative design process. This creates the evidence required to demonstrate your competency to achieve the qualification. 
Documenting your work progress is a key part of training to be an artist. So I repeat the image here. Carrying out the activities of creative thinking, researching history and theory, generating and exploring ideas, experimenting and developing technical skills to inform the work you are making. By documenting the process in detail, you are meeting the training requirements, but also developing and refining your own creative visual style and marketable product. This is what distinguishes one artist from another. You will learn how to do research for art making by watching, listening to art related media, reading about art and craft, visiting exhibitions, museums, artist studios, inspirational sites, photographing and videoing for documenting your practical work progress and collecting visual inspiration, sketching and idea development and recording it all in a sketchbook, visual journal, or diary, or even alternative digital formats. To get more detailed information about course dates, times, location, required tools and equipment, and to access the fee calculator, you can visit our website and use the search terms visual arts. The next few slides though, do provide a summary. Each region may have different contact days in a week, and you will be advised of these on confirmation of your enrolment. The online sessions will be timetabled on a day to suit students statewide. These are your tuition fees. Subsidised means the course has been partially funded by the state government to ensure there is affordable access for all Tasmanians. The concession fee is for those who meet the eligibility criteria, and this can be found on the website. In real terms, the course is costed at the commercial rate, and this would be charged to commercial enterprises who want to train their staff in this qualification. In addition, there is a fee for materials used in class and retained by the student, and it's charged at usually between $60 to $100. This will be confirmed on enrolment. This is a summary of the types of tools, equipment and resources you will need to provide for yourself. You will not need everything on the first day. Notebook or journal and writing tools are a good start. Art supplies to meet assessment requirements are covered by your materials fee. However, many students like to source alternative materials for themselves and this is your choice. Sometimes you will be asked to bring in items or materials from around the house, not in use anymore, as shared resources for the sculpture unit. This is to meet requirements related to using sustainable materials. There are no entry requirements or prerequisites for either of these qualifications. However, as described, the Certificate 4 is a natural progression from the Certificate 3 and we encourage our students to start with the Certificate 3. If for no other reasons than to have the opportunity to have two years to dedicate to developing the art practice. However, if you do have the foundation skills as described for Cert 3, then the Cert 4 might serve you better. If you are unsure, you can certainly contact the Creative Industries by email and request for me to give you a call to discuss further. Here are some potential future study options on completion of either qualification. Other creative industry areas might include graphic design, illustration, arts administration, fashion or interior design. Many emerging artists and craft workers see the value in adding qualifications to their skill set, such as small business skills, as many will be self-employed. Both Hobart and Launceston share their art facilities with UTAS art departments, so it is quite common for our students to move into tertiary study there after completing our Certificate 4. The industry areas where fully qualified artists find themselves is diverse. From self-employment as an artist or craftsperson, making, exhibiting and selling own work, to being a concept artist for digital gaming production. 
Self-employment is possible as a graduate of the Certificate 4, but most well-paid art craft specific gigs will require a tertiary degree. However, the joy and satisfaction of scratching that creative itch cannot be underestimated and will enrich your life and support alternative job roles and pathways. Applications will open on the 8th of November, 2021. Visit our website and go to the Apply and Enrol page and watch our Applying at TAS TAFE presentation. After you have submitted your application, keep an eye on your emails as we will advise the outcome of your application or if we need further information from you. If you think you might need further support to undertake this course, such as disability support or any of those listed here, please make contact with our student support team. They are here to help and I can't recommend them highly enough. Some support can be provided to you for in-class assistance or access to out-of-class times. So that does conclude our formal presentation. Now let's answer your questions. Okay, so we have some, um, so I've got some questions here on the, on the right and I'll just go through a few of them. We've got here, where do I go to do the enrolments? Is it at Campbell Street TAFE or Hunter Street Campus? We actually encourage you to enrol online, um, but um, if you need some support with doing that, then we suggest you go to our client services centres, which would be at Campbell Street, in Hunter Street, um, Valley Road Campus in Devonport and Allenvale Campus in Launceston. Um, and then I've got a question there. I did a Cert 3 in Visual Arts last year and passed. Can I go straight on to Cert 4? Um, there is no reason why you can't be accepted into Cert 4, but you still need to do the enrolment process and do it sooner rather than later. It's not just an automatic thing of, of being transferred. You still need to do the, um, the actual enrolment process for next year. Um, now, I just, I see that I've got four questions, but I can't see the others, Matt. Can you help me with that? Uh, yep, I can. I've just got a couple more come through that I'm publishing now okay. as well. I'll just publish those. Yeah as well. The other ones were, do we need a camera for this course? Which I think was asked before it was explained in the webinar, where yeah. it said that your phone camera. Your phone is fine, yeah. It's a good idea to have one, but it, it's not a specialist product, yeah. Um, can you see um, those other ones come through? Yeah, so is this a photography course? No, it is not a photography course. It is a visual arts course. Um, and we don't specialise as such in any particular studio medium. However, students will have the opportunity to explore a wide range of mediums um, and um, techniques, and you can sometimes bring that photography into it. But no, you won't be taught photography specifically. And then I have another question there. So we are only studying on campus two days a week. That's right, two days a week contact on campus. Um, another half day on um, at a set time for online learning, but most of that is recorded so you can access that in your own time. Okay, anything more there? Uh, there is a few others. Can you see any of the others? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, I work part time. Is it possible to do this course around my work hours? Um, if, the, if your work hours can fit in with those two days attendance on campus, uh, then definitely you can. Many of our students do have part-time work as well, but just remember that there is a workload there or study load as well outside of the timetable classes. Um, but yes, it is certainly possible. Uh, what time do the applications are going to open? Uh, my understanding is they open from midday next Monday. And is this a photography, studying on and on? 
I am interested to know whether there are industry links for either of these courses. Um, nothing directly, but on each campus there are going to be um, different links that are uh, utilised for you. For example, at Hunter Street, um, they definitely make, make use of the wonderful resources that Mona have to offer. Um, in Devonport, they have their own gallery space as well as uh, Rant Arts and the regional gallery there that they have a really close relationship with. And here in the north in Launceston, we of course have the wonderful QV mag that we make use of as well. Uh, then when's the cutoff date to enrol? There won't be any cutoff date as such, but the listing will fill up and then close. I think it's around the 20 to 25 student mark, so I would get in as soon as possible. Remember, um, you know, that if you're interested or you want to discuss further, you can certainly email Creative Industries at TASTAFE and ask for one of the teachers or myself to give you a call. OK, and then we have another one there. How long does it take after we apply to know about whether we got into the course, please? Great question, and I can't determine that exactly. I think it takes a couple of weeks to go through the process um, and um, you should know by the end of the year. OK, anything else coming through? Uh, is there any idea of what days of the week will the course will run? Um, from my understanding, and because we're different regions, then um, in the northwest and south, I believe that Certificate 3 is Monday, Tuesday, and then Certificate 4 is Tuesday, Wednesday. In Launceston, Certificate 4 is Monday, Tuesday, Certificate 3 is Wednesday, Thursday. Now, that is what the plan is at this stage. Um, but I do have to say that we can't be locked into that exactly, but this gives you a bit of an idea. Okay, and Cameron, to what extent is acrylic and oil painting explored? So on each campus, there are teachers with um, both of those skills, acrylic and oil painting. And while you would have seen in our modules that we had sculpture, digital, um, molding and casting, um, printmaking, there wasn't anything that referred um, directly to painting, but that is what the drawing unit is about. As you can appreciate, drawing can be very, very broad in our understanding of it, and that is where you'll look at a whole range of 2D media, including acrylic and oil painting. Again, too, it also does depend um, on what the individuals are interested in and what you um, want to pursue as well and we can shift and direct some of our demonstrations and skill sessions to make sure that we're meeting everyone's interest in the group. Um, is parking available at the Hunter Street question? Great question and I have to say I don't know. It's probably worth a phone call to our um, information general phone line of TASTAFE to get that confirmed. Um, is it hard to get into the courses? Do they fill up really quickly? Well, as we stated, there's no um, actual uh, prerequisite or conditions to do. It is pretty much a first in best dressed. Um, but if for some reason you miss out on something for a reason and you're really desperate to get into, please again organise a um, a phone call with us to talk about it. You may find an instant where the Cert 3 might fill up and then there's a space in the Cert 4, but you're not sure if Cert 4 is right for you. I'd encourage you to enrol in that Cert 4 because at the beginning of the year, both, both cohorts will start at the same time and there will be some move for um, you know, flexibility and rejigging of enrolments if needed, if people find that they're not quite in the right spot. OK, um, is there a photography course at TAS TAFE in Devonport? Not as far as I'm aware, uh, Kayana. The um, photography as a specific specialisation is not covered within um, a TAS TAFE course, but there are certainly elements of photography that you will find in visual arts. You will find it in graphic design. You will find it in design fundamentals. Um, so that might be something to look at as well for you. 
Okay, and we'll go down. Can you get prior recognition for Cert 3 when you do a Cert 4? If you've already done a Certificate um, 3 before and you have the skills, then that's going to put you in better stead to be able to go straight into the Certificate 4. There's no actual recognition or credit because there um, are not the same units of competency. So you'll enrol in a new set of competencies with a new set of skills. Uh, what times are the on-campus classes? Usually they are from 9 to 12 with a lunch break um, for an hour and then 1 to 3. So usually that five hours a day. Um, does it include jewellery making or silver smith smithing? Um, again, a bit like the photography, there is no specialist um, course in that in a particular um, studio process. Um, but in um, Hobart in the South, for instance, uh, one of the staff members there is a, is a jewellery maker, so there will be some techniques and that that will come into it, but it will not be what's considered a silver smithing course, no. Okay, oh, they're still coming. Is there an email we could contact me? There sure is, and I will say that now. It is Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, dot Holcomb, H-O-L-C-O-M for mother, B for Bertie, E, at tastafe dot tas dot edu dot au. It's a long one. It's a long one. But if you haven't caught that or whatever, go to the Creative Industries at TASTAFE, you'll find that direct link on the public website and just ask, can you, um, you know, have Melissa contact you? Uh, how many people are accepted into the course? Usually uh, most of the campuses have about capacity for 20 to 25 students in each group. Uh, how much of our classes will be online? In the Cert 3, it makes up about 25% of the course. In the Certificate 4, it's about 50% of the course is online. Okay. The reason we do that is to make sure that our time on campus is really um, dedicated to making, experimenting and making and making use of the equipment and the facilities here so that your theory, your written work, um, your knowledge uh, units are taken care of online. There's just, uh, just uh, sorry, just before you go there, there's just one question that came through as a private one that I can't actually publish that was just yeah. in relation to is there any way to know what days will be on campus? Um, it, look, it'll be confirmed, I would say, in the next couple of weeks uh, to make sure. So you should know before, you know, as you are enrolling or your enrolment is confirmed. I hope that responds to it. It depends on your uh, region. If you write me an email or contact Creative Industries, then I can confirm those for each region. All right, any more? Uh, one more just came through, I think, at the bottom there. Hang on, one more. Uh, do these classes have pathways that lead to jobs in creative careers? Yes, they do. Um, it's, it's not directly to a job outcome. The reality of um, the creative industries is that there is quite a bit of training to be able to do to work directly in industry. However, in saying that, even with these skills in perhaps a Cert 3 or Cert 4, you could be looking at, you know, working as a, a guide in a museum or art gallery. You could be um, doing freelance work as an illustrator, taking commissions. Um, you could be producing uh, product and objects to set up your own market stall or start prototyping um, a, a marketable product. Um, a lot of our people probably from here will either go into tertiary education. Uh, the reason for that then is a degree in visual arts. 
is um, gives you a pathway into looking at um, receiving art grants and funding from um, from the arts organisations around Australia and employment opportunities for artists. Again, um, studio artists working as concept artists for digital gaming, illustrators, you might move into graphic design, you might move into fashion, you might move into interior design. So there's a lot of different pathways um, that can lead you into a creative career. Okay, and another one. Is there a need to present a portfolio on application? No, not at all. Um, is ceramics and pottery covered in this course? There we have units of sculpture and um, moulding and casting where you will touch on ceramics and pottery. But again, it's not something that specialises entirely in. The, um, the aim of the course is to introduce you to a wide range of um, mediums and processes um, to be able to apply the creative process to. So with the Certificate 3, there is pretty much an understanding that um, you might not know anything about art, but it's something that you've already always desired to do. Or it might even be something that you've come out of uh, year 11 and 12 and done some art in, or the last time you did it was only in year 10, and it was years and years and years ago. So um, I think we use the phrase of scratching that creative itch and it's something that you want to get back to or you want to start a learning journey towards becoming a professional artist. The Cert 4 is for those of you that perhaps have been uh, working as in developing your own art practice for a long time. That might, might mean that you are regularly drawing, you're regularly researching, you might be regularly entering art competitions, uh, those things, so some of those practical skills and even um, foundation about the art world are in place and therefore the Cert 4 is about giving you the time and space to start dedicating to refining and improving your work, your art practice. Okay, uh, what's the general age range for students in these courses? We have people from 16 to 78. Okay. I think I got all of those. All right, nothing more coming through, Matt. Just one literally just came through. Will we have to present a portfolio as an assessment? Uh, no, you do not. Uh, not as uh, for application, you don't need to. Will we present a portfolio as assessment? Um, portfolio might be one of the activities for assessment. Usually what happens is, um, as we talked about in the presentation, a learning block might um, last for four to six weeks where you're um, working within a particular uh, materials and techniques exploration. That will um, end in an assessment project, which will um, be you working within that medium towards a finished artwork. And then um, that leads to insert in the term four, what we call a self-directed project. So that is where um, you're not responding to a particular brief or a particular creative prompt. You're actually working on something of your own and depending on what medium or techniques you're using, that might represent um, one work or you know three to four to five works. In the Cert 3, um, it tends to stay in your portfolio. In the Cert 4, there is the opportunity um, or there is a component of that final self-directed project to exhibit it um, and learn those um, processes for exhibition. As to, you know, will you learn how to put a portfolio together, there's certainly those skills are within the course, yes.
Uh, my son has completed level two and three photography. Is this suitable for a Cert 4? I would probably recommend um, that you organise to have a chat with the campus teachers or call me to sort of discuss that a bit further um, because I probably need to just ask a, a few more questions about, um, you know, how is your son's journal keeping skills? How is his research skills about art? Uh, what is his perhaps general knowledge about art other than photography? Um, to those things to see whether he um, would benefit for doing the certificate three. If he's, you know, completed level two and three photography to a high level and it looks like it, it carries a lot of that uh, broader information in it, then yes, he could very well um, be looking at going straight into the CERT 4. Okay, some really great questions there. I hope I've managed to um, answer them as directly as possible, but please, I do encourage you um, to make contact if you have any more questions, um, and I'll try and respond to you as soon as you can, as I can, so you can make that decision. All right, I don't think there's any more questions, uh, but if you have any more, then please don't hesitate to... Um... Thank you for joining me. We will close now and again, many thanks for your attention. As the slide says, you can direct further questions to our admin team on the email address here. And please do not hesitate to request a phone call from either myself or one of the teaching team if needed.